Hello and welcome to this edition of Credit Matters TV. I'm Zainab Holmes, country representative for Turkey. Today we will be speaking about the growth opportunities and risks in the Turkish insurance industry. I'm joined in the studio by Ali Karakuyu, who is a senior analyst in our European insurance practice. Ali, thank you very much for joining. Thank you. Uh, Ali, you have written an article recently on the Turkish insurance industry and the growth opportunities and also risks. Can you start uh, by telling us more about what these growth opportunities are exactly? Yeah, uh, certainly. Uh, the, the Turkish insurance market offers a significant potential for growth going forward and as we've seen in the past. Uh, that's reflecting the fact that the market is still immature when compared to the developed insurance markets in Western uh, Western world. Um, in 2010, the whole sector only wrote a premium income of 9.2 billion US dollars. And when we bear in mind the economic growth stage that Turkey is going through and the low penetration of insurance, we believe that the, uh, the Turkish market offers significant potentials for the insurance sector as a whole. Uh, excluding the uh, 08 09 years, which were impacted by the economic downturn, the the sector has been uh, experienced growth rates which have reached uh, more than 20 percentage points mm -hmm. historically. And we believe that by year end 2011 and 12, uh, the level of growth is likely to be about 10 to 15 percentage points in gross premium income terms. Um, having said that, uh, those companies are who are who are willing to take advantage of the significant growth uh, going forward will need to bear in mind two two points. One is the fact that the market is very concentrated, uh, i.e. Uh, more than uh, 70 or 80 percent of the premium income, depending on whether you're looking at non-life or life sector, is dominated by top 10 companies. And we believe that that's likely to continue uh, over the medium term. And the other factor is the distribution channel. The Turkish insurance market, particularly the non-life sector, is dominated by the agent distribution model which control about 70% mm -hmm. of the uh, distribution channel. So unless companies can secure a, an efficient uh, distribution channel, uh, they will not be able to take advantage of the growth uh, going forward. Mm -hmm. So in these um, growth opportunities and, and the way the market's developing, the regulator has also taken quite significant steps to align regulation with the European Union regulation. Can you give us a flavor of what this, uh, these, these new regulations uh, may be and how they will impact the industry? Yes, certainly. Um, uh, as you say, there have been significant changes in regulation uh, since 2007. And we understand most of these changes have been put uh, through. And uh, we view these changes positively uh, because they concentrate on the transparency of the insurance sector, mm -hmm. which we believe will develop the insurance market as a whole. And secondly, there's more greater focus on the balance sheet strength of the insurance sector, which again we view positively. But bearing in mind, the, the company s will need to uh, ensure that they are compliant with these regulatory changes. Mm -hmm. So in this environment of regulatory changes that help the market and, and also the growth opportunities, we also see some risks in the sector. Um, can you tell us a bit more about the main risks you see in the Turkish insurance industry? Yeah, um, the, the key risks from our perspective are first of all the pricing uh, adequacy. Uh, historically, the, the Turkish insurance sector has been relying on the investment income to offset their technical um, technical losses, meaning that they have not been charging enough premium uh, to policyholders. And historically, they could uh, they could afford to do that because there was the high interest rate environment, which just meant that any technical losses would be offset by the investment income. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, inv the, the investment yield environment is currently low, and we, we believe that it is likely to continue over the medium term. So therefore, the companies will need to make sure that they are, p uh, they are placing greater focus on pricing adequacy uh, such that they are not faced with the risk of not being able to mm. uh, uh, offsetting the technical losses with investment income. Mm -hmm. And secondly, it, it, uh, the companies are exposed to earthquake risk uh, exposure. Um, it, it, that's, as we all know, 
uh, it's stemming from the fact that Turkish, Turkey is prone to, the, uh, prone to earthquake risk. Since 1999, uh, when the major earthquake took place in, uh, in the Marmara region, uh, the government brought in uh, compulsory earthquake insurance. Although the penetration is still low at about 22 percentage points, the industry as a whole, the non-life in particular, is exposed to the earthquake risk modeling and the data risk. So companies will need to carefully measure the, their earthquake exposure such that they're not faced with the significant capital depletion in the event of an earthquake. Mm -hmm. And finally, the investment risk, which is largely uh, reflecting the fact that uh, the sovereign rating on Turkey is low, and that constrains our view of the, in the industry's investment risk profile and the capital adequacy, because uh, most of the companies hold their investments in local banks or as government bonds. Mm, okay, so, so bearing all these risks in mind and, and the, the regulatory changes and the potential for growth, what is overall your opinion on the industry? We, we have a positive view on this sector, uh, largely reflecting the growth opportunities uh, and also the, regulatory, the positive regulatory changes, uh, assuming that the companies will carefully monitor the pricing, inadequ uh, pricing adequacy and their risk to earthquake modeling risk. Okay, thank you very much, Ali. Unfortunately, this is all we have time for today, and we hope to see you again on Credit Matters TV. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.